Hey guys, thank you so much for tuning into today's podcast. Today's podcast is very intentional, and the intentionality behind it is I want to help you grow wealth. I want to help you build a real estate portfolio, and I want to help you to build the life of your dreams. And we want to talk about tips for finding off market properties in a tight market. So I think this is true wherever you are in the country. We're still dealing with this inventory crunch, crisis, shortage, whatever you want to call it. And quite frankly, I don't think it's going anywhere soon, especially given the economic situation that we're in. Uh, Rental prices are crazy high. We still have higher rates. And it just seems like we're going to be stuck in this little window, this little bubble for a while. So rather than sulk about it, rather than complain, rather than start doing something else and get out of the business, I think if you just master some really basic tips to start to find off market properties, start to knock down properties yourself, start to marry up investors with off market properties, and then get the round trip ticket to be able to sell them, I think you're going to be in a fantastic situation to win in 2024 and beyond. So I think that by having multiple solutions and by becoming a hybrid agent, Being able to offer, I can buy it, I can sell it, I can flip it, I can assign it. You're in such a stronger position than the average agent that just comes in with one tool in the toolbox and that's all they know how to do. I think the challenge is many people just never start because they don't know how to even approach this. They don't know how to market for properties. They don't know how to properly disclose situations. And I think that that's where you're gonna set yourself apart from the competition. And that's why I hope as a result of listening to today's podcast, you're really gonna be in a great spot to really start to execute on some of these tips. So the first thing I wanna touch upon is A, B, M. Always be marketing, okay? Also, A, B, P, always be promoting. The only way that people in your network are going to know that you're looking to buy property that you're looking to marry up investors with off-market properties, that you're looking to buy seven properties this year, 10 properties this year, 15 properties this year, is to get it out to the universe. So I've had this conversation with so many agents throughout the years about not being an undercover agent. You also need to not be an undercover investor. That's the only way that the law of attraction is gonna work. You're gonna put out your positive vibes, your energy, and deal flow is going to come to you. So a quick actionable step that you can take right after listening to this podcast is to put a post up on social media, put something in your stories about what you're looking to do this year, your goals, your aspirations, who do they know looking to sell a property? Who do they know that's a hoarder? (laughs) Uh, Who do they know that's in a distressed situation that you can help? And I think you really need to identify what's stopping you from becoming a top real estate investor? What's stopping you from at least having another tool in your toolbox in order to help people? And I think until you identify that, you're still gonna be in a block, you're still gonna be stuck. So I would really implore you guys to take a little bit of time after you listen to this podcast, or if your life's too crazy during the week, we typically drop on Wednesdays, Uh, take some time on the weekend, go to a quiet park, Go somewhere where you can get quiet and you can identify why are you not doing the things that you really dream of doing? And I know so many people that want to become real estate investors, but they just can't get out of their own way. So for some, it might be mindset. For some, it might be lack of knowledge. For a lot, and I think for the masses, it's fear. We talk about this a lot. We've talked about it in another podcast. The only way to get over this is to take the first step. And for many of you, that's going to be in some of the steps that we're going to talk about right now. All of the riches, all of the everything you desire is just on the other side of taking the first step. And in our world, real estate entrepreneurs, real estate phenoms, it's off market deals. It's off market listings. It's being able to be on both sides of the transaction, or it's able to really help to facilitate selling a property, to get up to a bigger property, 
to build a portfolio and to really start to grow, to start to get yourself uncomfortable. And that's where all the beauty lies in this business, in my humble opinion. <laughs> so the first step is set an absolute drop dead commitment on the amount of time that you're willing to invest in finding off market properties and really starting to build this side of your business. So I don't care how much it is, just take a first step, okay? Maybe it's one hour, maybe it's two hours. Maybe, like what I do most weeks is I block a half a day. Typically for me, that's Fridays because Fridays tend to be the, the calmest. So I typically block a half day. Also, it's something that I really enjoy doing. So I have something to look forward to during the week and the Monday through Thursday grind that I'm gonna get to call people. I'm gonna get to you know look for off-market properties. I'm gonna get to uh, drive for dollars. I'm gonna get to call commercial agents, somebody that can really help me to find deals. The next one is, who is going to be your avatar? What type of properties do you want to buy? Is it fix and flip? Is it single family? Is it multifamily? Is it condos? Is it buy something to Airbnb? I don't really care what it is, but I think that the best way to start with this is to stay in one lane, maybe in two lanes, and focus on the buy box. We had an episode um, earlier in the series. Uh, all we talked about is the buy box. We'll drop that episode in the show notes so you can go back and reference it. But I think that was a phenomenal episode to really help you guys to dial in on the buy box. The next is, what is your call to action, okay? Are you the person that just buys distressed property? Are you the person that has a lot of relationships? Do you put together creative deals? Do you have owner financing? Basically, what are you going to do to get the phone to ring and to get these people to reach out to you? The next is your marketing methodology, okay? Are you going to commit to direct mail? Are you going to commit to Google PPC? Are you going to commit to Facebook ads? Are you gonna to go to meetup groups? Are you going to connect with wholesalers? Are you gonna let every agent know in your office that you're looking to buy off market properties and they can represent you if they find something? What are you going to do in order to get the word out? So what I will say, and just a little tit tidbit of advice here, is it really all depends on budget and time. So if the budget is extremely tight, you're not really gonna to wanna to get involved in PPC in the beginning because you're gonna to wanna to spend probably somewhere between two to $4,000 a month at a minimum in order to get the upside and really get the return that you're looking for. But if you have 500, 1,000, 2,000 to spend a month, I think direct mail is a fantastic place to start. But it's targeted direct mail. It's building a list. It's driving for dollars. It's hitting the people that you really think and that data tells you have the highest likelihood to get on the market and get sold or to buy off market. Because don't forget guys, the other beautiful thing for all the realtors that are listening to this is you still have your traditional business. So even though you're gonna be marketing for off market properties, you're still gonna get residential listings and residential buyers that come as a result of this. So it's kind of a two pronged approach of really helping to attract an abundance of business. And I promise if you commit to this 100 minutes a day, two hours a day, three hours a day, and this is what you focus on, you are going to have so much business that you don't know what to do with yourself. I promise you guys, you just have to commit, you have to step into faith, get away from fear, and really get ready for breakthrough because this is where all the real big money lies. So the next thing is, are you fully prepared to buy these properties, okay? Don't start to fire off two to 3,000 pieces of mail every single month and not be ready to pull the trigger and buy a property. I've had it happen where people have walked away from deals because they didn't think that the marketing would work and they weren't ready to buy. They didn't talk to somebody, they didn't tell me, they told somebody like me after it was too late and the deal was already gone and somebody else uh, bought it, knocked it down and made $100,000. Don't let that be you, okay? If you're listening to this, if you're in my ecosystem, we have all the tools in place to be able to be in a position 
to knock down properties. So unless you have a problem where you have five to 10 deals coming in a month, you can't buy them all. There's no reason why you can't find an easy way. You can't find a partner. You can't find funding to really start to knock down properties. And I think the beautiful thing about having this two pronged approach, expanding your business horizons is five to seven deals, even three to four deals, three to five deals can completely change the trajectory of your business. So think about this. Let's say if you normally do 20 or 30 deals a year, you're making a couple hundred grand, you're on the grind, you're on the roller coaster, you know, you're putting in the 60, 70 hour weeks. I know all about it. Okay. <laughs> Trust me. So imagine if then you can overlay doing another hundred, 200, 300, 500,000 dollars a year on top of that and start to really build a business. I personally don't think if you're a solo agent, it's not a knock at solo agent. So don't give me any hate mail on this, but I really don't even think that if you're just a solo practitioner, you actually have a business because what happens if something happened to you? What happens if, you know, you broke a leg or God forbid you got sick or something happened, you had to take care of a loved one and you wanted to commit that you're going to spend three to six months with them, right? Your business is going to suffer. That's why I'm a huge proponent of not only building a team, but also building the off market arm of your business, because that's where all the freedom will eventually lie. So the last thing guys is you have to put accountability behind this. Okay. Please do not be the one to get off of this podcast. Say to yourself, I'm going to go out, I'm going to buy 50 properties and then never do anything. So get it on the calendar, spend some time, reach out. If I can help you feel free to ping me, call me, text me, whatever. And I'm more than happy to help to walk you guys through this. But the most important thing is you have to take action. That's it for today, guys. Really appreciate all the support. If you know anybody that can really benefit from this podcast, from this episode, please like it, please share it, and please get the word out. Thank you.